Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Recently I've been super busy. I've been on Twitch daily live streaming as well as creating some YouTube content. So I'm going to have about one to two YouTube videos coming out a week and I'm super excited about that. I hope you guys are just excited as I am about those things. Um, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like and remember to subscribe for more awesome videos. So the topic of conversation today specifically is going to be technical interviews, also known as whiteboard interviews for software engineers. And we're going to talk about how you can prepare for them in the long term, as well as how you can prepare the day of and be ready when the interviewer asks these two questions. Okay, so let's get started. First things first, what is a technical interview? A whiteboard interview is a technical assessment of your programming skills. The interview team gives the candidate a programming question within a certain time limit that they have to solve in front of a panel of people or one individual interviewer. This problem is often used to assess the candidate's ability to problem solve, their understanding of general programming knowledge, as well as algorithms and data structures. The complexity of the problem can really depend on the level and the position that the candidate is applying for. For example, an entry level candidate might get a much easier question than a senior candidate. And that leads us to our next question is why do so many companies use whiteboarding as their main interview format? Well, first of all, interviewers want to see a candidate's problem solving skills. It isn't always about finding the perfect solution. The interviewer wants to see the candidate think on their feet and feel uncomfortable without the regular resources that they have to use during programming on a day to day basis. A lot of programmers are used to having Google, their IDE and other resources readily available to them. And so the interviewer gets to see how they perform without all of those things. As the interviewee, do you crack under pressure? Do you give up when you can't think of a solution? How good are your communication skills? What critical thinking questions do you ask when you get stuck? These are all the things that the interviewer is looking for. They're not just simply looking to see that you are a genius. They want to know what you can and cannot do as well as how well you can communicate and work in a team. All right, so now that we've covered what a whiteboard interview is, let's talk about how to prepare for one. Okay, so first and foremost, we have the most important tip. The tip for preparing is to start early and prepare in advance. And when I say in advance, I don't mean a couple weeks. I mean at least months in advance. If you're preparing for a technical interview, you should start practicing your data structures and algorithms at least six months in advance and continue to practice them daily until you're ready to interview. It is super important not to procrastinate on learning your algorithms and data structures. It's important to practice a variety of different problems. You never know what kind of question you're going to be asked, but there are some great online resources that you can use to find the problems that you can solve daily. A couple of great resources that you can use are some websites. Um, I will go ahead and list them down below. So Leet Code is one, Leet Code. Hacker Rank is another good website. There is also a book called Cracking the Coding Interview. I highly suggest that you guys look into getting that book. It is really great as well, as well as, of course, use YouTube as a resource. And there's also Udemy. You know, you can take an algorithms and data structures course on Udemy to better understand the structure before you dive into the problems that you can practice on Leak Code, Hacker Rank or Code Wars. All right. So tip number two, when you are practicing, what should you be doing? First of all, you should simulate the process as closely as you possibly can to the actual interview. There's a couple things that you can do to make sure that you're doing that. First, you're going to want to get a whiteboard or use a Google Doc or something that is in your IDE to practice these problems. You're going to realize really quick that writing code on a piece of paper or a whiteboard is very different from writing it in your IDE. Our code editors provide us with so many shortcuts that we don't even realize, like auto closing our brackets and auto formatting our things that we sometimes forget how to actually do these things ourselves. These are also going to be the things that you're going to need to think of when you write on a whiteboard, because not only are you being assessed on the quality of your problem solving skills, you're also be assessed on your cleanliness and your code as well. It is very important to show clean, organized code. Another important thing that you're going to want to do when you're preparing for the interviews is have mock interviews, whether it's a friend or a colleague, just ask someone to help you out. They will ask you a question, set a time limit and have you answer it in front of them. A lot of times when you do a mock interview, you'll be able to identify your weak points and see what you're missing out on. 
Also, it's much easier to get your nerves out on a friend or colleague than it is to get them out in the actual interview. So by practicing in front of other people, you'll feel more comfortable doing this around other people. Additionally, if you step into the role of the interviewer yourself and you're presenting a mock interview for someone else, you'll get a whole other perspective of interviewing and you'll be able to maybe take some things from that as well. Another thing that you're doing when you're just practicing is make sure to talk out loud to yourself a lot. This might seem like something crazy and something we're really not used to doing, but the reason is, is because we're not used to doing it, we should be doing it. When preparing for a whiteboard interview, it is super important to practice your communication skills. Therefore, when you're talking to yourself, you're practicing speaking your thoughts out loud so that when you're in the interview, you will be doing the same thing with the other person there. All right, so now that we've talked about how to prepare in advance, let's talk about the night before the interview. Whether it's your first whiteboard interview or you've done a bunch of them, nerves are common. And so you might be really nervous the night before. As I've stated before, practice should start months in advance. If you're trying to practice your algorithms the night of, I am just going to tell you that that is not going to sink into your brain and going to be beneficial to you the next day. Instead of trying to pull an all nighter, trying to solve those problems, make sure that you get a really good night's sleep. Make sure you also stay hydrated and eat a good meal. Those are really important. Your health, the day of the interview, having a fresh mind and brain is going to be very important. Your brain will then be fueled by nutrients and therefore when you come to the interview next day, you'll be refreshed and ready to go. Okay, so now let's talk about the day of the interview and all the things that you should do before and during your interview. Whether your interview is going to be remote or in person, make sure that you're adequately prepared and on time. You really want to make sure there's no additional stressful factors that are going to affect how you feel the day of the interview. The way you dress really can vary between position to position, and so it can be hard to tell depending on what company you apply to. But generally with tech interviews, you want to look nice and clean and put together, but you don't necessarily need to be wearing a suit. Now let's talk about the interview process itself, the scariest part of it all. Tip number one, do not rush into starting to code. This is one of the biggest rookie mistakes that people make when they come to a technical interview, especially when you have lots of nerves. Once the interviewer has stated the problem, it's really easy to rush in, especially when there's a clock ticking and you have a certain time limit. In that moment, when you want to rush in, you need to stop yourself and think of a couple things that you need to do first. First, you should be restating the question back to the interviewer. You really want to make sure that you got the question right and that you didn't miss anything the interviewer said because imagine getting the question wrong and just trying to solve that real quick and wasting the entire interview period of time doing a different problem. Number two, make sure you ask the interviewer additional questions about the prompt that they gave you. Most of the time the interviewer doesn't explain all the scenarios when they're explaining the problem. Sometimes the interviewer literally leaves these things out just to see if you will ask about the edge cases. Number three, before you start actually coding, pseudocode a solution. Pseudocoding is where you comment out exactly what you're going to do or write it out or speak it out before actually creating code on the whiteboard. Pseudocode is simply just plain English text that describes exactly what you're going to do step by step when solving the problem. This is really important for planning out exactly what you're going to do. Since you have a short amount of time, you want to make sure that you've covered all the steps and then you can start programming. The best thing about pseudocode, if worse comes to worst and you somehow don't have time to finish the problem that you're working on, at least the interviewer will have a good understanding of the logic and the mapping that you decided to use for this problem and know whether you might be a good candidate based off of those logical reasonings. Another really important thing that you need to make sure that you'd be doing in your interview is communicating constantly. You should be talking through everything that you do. You should also be as detailed and as clear about everything that you do. The interviewer wants to know exactly what's going on in your head. Another thing that you should make sure to be doing is bouncing questions off the interviewer during the interview process. The interviewer will be assessing your problem solving skills as well as assessing your communication skills, but they're also going to be looking to see how well you work in a team with someone else. Maybe sure at home you work coding inside of a vacuum all by yourself working on your own projects. But when you're working for a tech company, you have to be able to communicate with your coworkers. You have to be able to pay a program with them. So there's a lot of important responsibilities there and they want to see how you can handle those things. If you're unsure of the syntax of something or have a slight question about something that you're working on, you can ask your interviewer. 
Many times the interviewer will not give you a direct answer to your question or help you or solve the problem for you, but they will help you along and give you hints as well as follow-up questions. You can even ask the interviewer about their opinion on your solution to see if they have something else to say that will steer you in the direction of a different solution. Remember, there's many different ways to solve one problem and it's always good to have the input of more than one person. Now, the last thing that you need to be doing is when you are in your interview, you should be acting confident. Yes, whiteboard interview questions can be very challenging and the environment can be very nerve wracking, but remember you prepared for this. You are ready for this. Come in there with that attitude. Leave the imposter syndrome at the door. You are capable of doing this and you have to show that confidence. If you are constantly hesitating and acting like you don't know what you're doing, that will be reflected in your interview and the interviewer will see through that and see that you're doing that. Also remember to not be too hard on yourself and remember there's always room for improvement. If you go in that interview and you bomb it, then guess what? You'll be prepared, better prepared for your next one because you'll know exactly what you need to work on. Inside of the interview room, you will see your biggest weaknesses and you will know what needs to change for your next interview. Although that might not be a pleasant experience, it'll be a very good reflective experience. And so remember that nothing is the end of the world. Being confident also doesn't mean that you should know everything or act like you know everything. When you reach a blocking point, don't hesitate to reach out and ask for help. Remember, the whiteboarding problem solving is not the only part of the interview. If you solve the algorithm the fastest or the best way possible, that still doesn't mean that you got the job in terms of all the other skill sets that you're supposed to show through your interview. Your interviewer is not solely assessing you on your technical skills, although it's a very large portion of the interview. And that, my friends, are the tips for whiteboard interviews. Hopefully that has been helpful. If it was, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll have more informational videos coming soon, all about tech, all about software engineering, as well as web development. So thank you guys and see you guys next time.